Got second dog out for potty break. Ready for it? What man? Kelsey. I also trained this dog. She was, I pretty much, you could say I raised this dog. So she was with me for a puppy program as soon as she, as soon as her owners got her. She came to me at eight weeks for a puppy program. I had her for four weeks. And then she went back to her owners and worked on, you know, worked with them and teaching them to, you know, all the basic, all the basic commands and how to continue that foundation of all the, you know, just basic work. And then uh, after that, a month or so later, she came back to me again for advanced obedience and was with me for four more weeks. She's six months old now. Doing good. Out here, third dog out for potty break. His name is Mr. Mayor, and he's peeing. Good boy, buddy. So this is a, a 10 month old, 11 month old chocolate lab who is here training to be a diabetic and seizure alert dog for his owner. All right, guys, we got fourth dog out for potty break. This guy's like a big old teddy bear. I love this dog. All right. Look at him. His name is Blaze, and he's a Bernadoodle. So it's a Bernese Mountain Dog Poodle Mix. All right. He is big and fluffy, and he's fun to snuggle. Look at his. He looks like a sheep, a big old sheep, and he's pretty big. I don't know if the camera's capturing how big he really is. He's big and he's fluffy, but he's a nice dog. And he's here for he's here for some advanced obedience, going through the advanced obedience program, learning off-leash freedom, how to be more calm in the house, when guests come over especially. I'm doing good. Out for potty break and morning walk. Lucy Lou, what you barking at, girl? This is a little high energy little Aussie doodle. All right, so she's always on the go, man, wanting to run, especially outside. So, and this, and this, that's the main problem that her owners are, are having is, you know, they have another dog in the house, a golden doodle, and she's constantly just on the go in the house, playing with other dog, and they, they never, she doesn't have an off switch, right? She doesn't know how to, when it's time to relax. So. She's doing, that's one of the main things we're teaching her. And she's doing really good. Doing really, really good. But you see how she's kind of, she's jumpy, man. She's ready to run. And that's the Australian Shepherd in her. But she's here for advanced obedience program too. All right, guys. Guys, so here is fast forwarded clip where we started our first training session of the day. I'm working with Blaze on his implied stay in his positions. So we're adding distractions like me moving around him, walking around in circles, and also picking up the leash, petting him, all that different kind of stuff, and showing him, teaching him that all that stuff may, doesn't mean he can get up. So that's what we're going here. All reward-based, no e-collar, and uh, just with to earn his breakfast. Same thing with Lucy. Working on sit with an implied stay, down with an implied stay, picking up the leash as a distraction, walking in circles around her as a distraction. If she is to get up, I will give a non-verbal or a verbal marker a no, and then fix her mistake and put her back in the position, and then reward when she does it correctly. No, no corrections in terms of e-call or anything like that. Same thing also with Mare. So if you notice, Mayor's video is a little slower. I couldn't, I didn't do it on the time-lapse version with his. So it's just, it isn't slowed down quite as much, but we're doing the same thing. We did a session with, you know, all the dogs earned their morning breakfast during this training session. And you see how he keeps getting up. He keeps messing up over and over here. But we continue to do it. and and let him know we have to show the dog those things. And the dog, it's actually good when the dog messes up because then we can fix the mistakes and teach them what we're looking for. Yeah. All right guys, so morning potty breaks and training sessions are done. It's about 8.30 now. We are about to get ready to go, have to go pick up two more dogs 
that I'm boarding just for the day. Two working dogs I'm boarding for the day. Got to go pick them up, and then right after that, go all the way to Wadawi to get our new puppy that we're raising. So I'm getting a chocolate lab puppy from Lake Wadawi Labradors that is going to be raised for a client. For I'm going to have her for about six months or so. Her name's Denver. Guys, now we got Kane here. And we got Kaza. Two working dogs that are going to be boarding with me just for the day. So we picked them up. Now it's Starbucks to get some coffee. And then we're heading to a Dowie to heading to a Dowie after that to pick up our chocolate lab puppy. Alright guys, we just picked up the puppy. Let me see Denver's face. Just got her comfortable. Seven week old chocolate lab. Gonna be going through our puppy raising program for she's gonna be with us for about four or five months getting trained up and then going to her new home we're back home after picking denver up this is kaza boarding her for the day i'm gonna take her out to this field and just play fetch with her for a little bit let her get some energy out it's a malinois so if i don't let her run for a little bit i'd be in big trouble so we just ran these two guys. Good job, Kane. Let them get some water now. Got them all tired, tired out as much as you can for a melon one. <laughs> and uh, now we're about to head back to the house and break our other dogs and start some more training. Good job, guys. We went and picked up two dogs that were boarding today. And we picked up our new puppy, Denver, who is currently screaming in her crate. That's part of that's part of having a puppy, guys. If you're gonna crate train your puppy, you have to deal with the screams, right? They're gonna do it a lot at first, and if you let them out while they're doing it, they're gonna continue to do it more and more and more. You have to wait until they till they stop screaming to let them out because make sure that they don't need to go to the bathroom, obviously. But if they just went to the bathroom and you put them in the crate, you gotta just let them screaming out. That's how you find you know you have to deal with that in order to get a calm puppy eventually. So now we're out and we are breaking dogs now. All right, so I'm still breaking dogs. I have a few more left to do. But while I'm breaking dogs, the two dogs that are just here for boarding, which is Gracie and Kelsey, they're gonna be in here doing place command and Nicola is in charge of them while I'm breaking dogs. All right, guys, we're still walking and breaking dogs. I have Mare out now. I just wanted to talk about, you know, even when it's just a free break, free walk, and we're just, you know, letting the dogs go potty and get a little exercise, we still can work on our recalls on leash without the e-collar, and also there's no food present, so the dog's learning to work in these situations as well and still respond. That's really important. Mayor, come. Good boy. Sit. Good. All right, guys, we, um... We finished breaking all the training dogs and now we got these two guys out again. Let them get a break. Two dogs were boarding for the day. Get it guys. Good job. Awesome dogs, man, I love them. Miss having Malinois. But we're gonna break these guys, let them run around for a little bit and then we're gonna get Denver back out. All right guys, so now we got Denver out. We are going to just start hand feeding her. Denver! Hey, good job. She's checking everything out. Her tail's constantly wagging, which is awesome. It shows that she's not, she does not nervous to go and check out the place. And she's never been here before. And she's taking the food just fine out of my hand. Very food driven, which is perfect for training. All right guys, so I finished up with Denver. She's back in her crate now, screaming again, but we're gonna ignore it because, you know, but she did eat food with me for some, a little bit of training. So I have to go and let her out in probably 30 minutes or so, something like that. But for now, I'm gonna ignore the screaming and we're about to start another training session with my three dogs that are here for training. Uh, Mayor, Blaze, and Lucy. All right, guys, it is 4.30 and we are finishing up the last dog on this round of training. We're just going for a little walk. Blaze, come. Good boy. And we're conditioning to the e-collar. Good job, buddy. Doing recall. All right, guys, now we're done with training. 
for that last round. We just finished up with Blaze. Now we got Denver out again. Y'all know the puppy, you gotta let him out a lot. So she was, she was being good in her crate. She was quiet, so we let her out. Everything I've seen from this puppy so far has been like amazing. She was just climbing across this little brick or wooden thing a minute ago. I this. Look, now she, now she don't really want to do it, but there she goes. There she goes. There she goes. Awesome environmentals. Look at the tail wagon. Always expose your puppy to as many things as possible when the, when they're young. You know, anything that you might think freak them out, expose them to it and and show them that it's okay. Doing awesome. Around a little after five. Denver's back in her crate. All the dogs have been trained. Now it's time for the personal dogs to go out. You know, you have to make time for them too. They don't get as much time, obviously, but still gotta let them out. That's something that, you know, is something behind the scenes that takes up time too. And what I'm also about to do is grab the pooper scooper and go clean up poop. All right, guys. Put my personal dogs back up, cleaned up all the poop in the yard, and now we're breaking dogs again. So, you know, this this is, you know, behind the scenes look at how it really goes, you know, when you're when you're running a dog business. So by the time you break all the dogs, train all the dogs that you gotta train, by the time all that is done, it's time for the dogs to to go to go outside again to take another break so it's like a never-ending cycle and there's really no stopping until you find a chance to to go to sleep for a few hours so look who it is time for a potty break for miss denver so we break all the dogs i'm gonna let denver out let her pee give her some play time in the house with us and after that we will do a training session Good job, you going pee pee. Good girl, baby. Good job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good job. I'm giving her a little freedom and some playtime. Look, she got a little toy. A second ago, she was climbing on the bed with Kelsey. It was so funny. Good girl. One more. Good girl. All right, guys. About 7.15 now, we're starting another training session. Lucy's the first dog to go, and we're, uh, uh, heel. And we are doing uh, heel work with the e-collar. Heel, good. All right guys, so we are finished with our nightly structured walk, working on healing and adding in the e-collar with that. And all the dogs went, mare finished, Lu uh, Lucy finished and Blaze finished. So we did like a 30 minute walk with each. Um, just teaching that hill position with the e-collar now along with the leash pressure. And they're all catching on really good. And now we are doing place work. Uh, Mayor's in here now. Each dog will get about 30 minutes or so working on place. Um, it's 8.30 now, so we're just starting with Mayor on, on this cycle of place work. He'll, he'll be there for about 30 minutes, and we might I might call him off, do a few things, send him back, stuff like that. And each dog will, will do that for about 30 minutes or so. All right, guys, so it is about 10.30 now. 10.23. And we got the final dog. Lucy is here. She's about to finish up her place work. She's been there for... You know, probably over 30 minutes working on some duration place. Uh, Mayor already did the same thing as well as Blaze. So I'm going to end the video here, guys. We're going to let her do finish up a few more minutes. And then after that, I need to break all the dogs again, including Kelsey and Gracie, who are both here just for boarding. And then Denver, the puppy as well. So... By the time I'm done with all that, it's gonna be close to midnight. So that's when I'm looking to finish up for the day. So that's starting 6 a.m., finishing up at midnight with not many breaks in between, right? So that's the reality when you're running a dog training business and you're by yourself and you have no employees, right? So I love every minute of it, but it definitely can be tough and, and it's a lot of work, but 
That's what we're doing, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed the video.